Hello everyone, welcome back to another Me Time episode with me, Edil Ortega, a podcast where I talk to you guys as I drive to work. And today's episode, I will be covering the new Netflix series, Messiah. I saw the first episode, very interesting show. I'm going to share my thoughts on the first episode, so stay tuned, be ready. And I also and, and I am also going to be talking about uh, a testimony that I have on how pressure can really test your beliefs in God. So stay tuned. But first, a word from our sponsor. Hello everyone, welcome back to Me Time. Hope you enjoyed that message by me. And now we are going to jump into today's episode. Or maybe I should stall a little, right? It's Thursday, we're almost at the end of the week, almost there. We're pushing through the week. This week has been very interesting for me because I have shared a lot of my opinions or I shouldn't say opinions at least a lot of my understanding of the Bible uh, in my previous two episodes so if you haven't watched though if you haven't listened to those episodes please do and I would love to hear your opinions on anything I say uh, so yeah Thursday January 9th Yeah, I don't even know what day it is. I just know that it's Thursday. I'm on my way to work, talking to you guys. And we're going to start talking about the Messiah right now. Uh, Yeah, the Messiah is a new show on Netflix. It's not based on any true events. And the show's description is very uh, uh, attention-grabbing, you could say. is is what caught my attention. It's basically... Uh, This person shows up in Iran, starts having some followers, and basically the U.S. or people don't know whether he's a terrorist or the, basically the Messiah, you know, so it's very good show, very good premise. Uh, So first episode, I watched it the other night, and it definitely hooked me definitely hooked me can't wait to watch the second episode it hooked my wife she was watching it with me even though she's on the edge between not liking it and liking it but she said she told me last night oh when are we going to watch the next episode of the messiah um so we'll probably watch that either tonight or tomorrow uh but stay tuned because i'm going to be reviewing the messiah show on this podcast whenever I watch it can't give you a date of when I'm gonna watch it I'll definitely watch it by next Thursday so being that today's Thursday and I'm giving the review today maybe I'll make this a series that I will review on a weekly basis just so that I don't rush through it and binge watch it because I definitely want to talk about every single episode with you guys and I am going to be going into spoilers so if you haven't watched it uh, skip through the epi- skip through a few minutes of the episodes that I'm going to be talking about it I can- I usually talk about a TV series or movie or episode for at least uh, three to five minutes I- at least I want to say but uh, you never know so if, if I'm still if you skip ahead and you I'm still talking Messiah Just skip ahead a little bit more. (laughs) All right. So, uh, spoiler warning, like I said, I'm going to talk about episode one as if you watched it with me. Okay? So, like I said, spoiler alert. The Messiah on Netflix, episode one, starts with uh, this person showing up in Iran. Right? This Messiah personality that they're introducing in this show showing up in Iran 
which I found surprising with everything that is going on in Iran today between the US and Iran, right? So this person starts preaching in the streets, the people are listening to him, the city is about to be to go under attack. Um, I'm not sure by who, I don't remember. But basically the, the, the person preaching the Messiah, because I'm, I'm just going to call him uh, Messiah, the, the person, right? He starts preaching about salvation and how the time has arrived uh, for, for salvation and the city's going to be saved. And just as he starts to preach this stuff, the city starts to be under attack. But just as the city is under attack, this huge sandstorm covers the city. And I forget what city it was in Iran. But it's a, it was a pretty big city. And this huge sandstorm pretty much covers the city, according to the news report on the show, for about 40 days or 40 plus days, right? So this Messiah person now has followers. All these people that were there um, as he was preaching salvation become his followers, right? And he's leading these people into... Actually, let's talk about that that event, the, the sandstorm first, before we move on in the show. Before we move on in the show, let's talk about the event. The, the, the event is something that shows God's power, right? Sandstorm, 40 days over a city, only God can do that, right? And it's amazing how power, right? When someone demonstrates the power of God, how people just get attracted to them, you know? People just become attracted to that person because they want what, <clears throat> because they, they not only want to follow someone like that they want to learn from them right how do you have this connection with God right and it's amazing how sometimes I look at churches today right and well uh, l l let me let me not jump into that topic I'm sorry l let's keep going with the Messiah right let's keep going <laughs> let's keep going with the messiah all right so he does this miracle stops the war stops the attack because the 40 days during that sandstorm uh all the tanks all their their weaponry got covered with sand so they had to pretty much abandon the attack right so this guy now has followers and he starts taking like 2,000 people into the desert right so at this point the U.S. starts to, the CIA, this person in the CIA starts to get involved, right? Because apparently when you have one person leading 2,000 people into the desert in Iran, the U.S. wants to know about it, right? So this U.S. lady played by Michelle Monaghan, Michelle Monaghan and hopefully I'm not butchering her name there, uh... The CIA agent, she sees the video of everybody calling him Messiah, following him, these 2,000 followers. So she becomes concerned, right? Because he's a potential terrorist at this point, right? He has 2,000 people following following him. He has no, She has no idea what he's going to be leading these people into, right? So she starts to, during the show, you know, they, they hint at something that's wrong with her physically, you know, she says it's not her first time. She's at a doctor's appointment. Um, and she didn't get good news. So, uh, my guess is that she's trying to have a baby of, of some sort or um, pregnant. Even though they haven't hinted at any relationship in this first episode with her. Any guy having a relationship. But, that's my best guess. Uh, anyway. She starts to get involved. She starts to investigate. She starts going through the channels to get authorization on investigating this guy, right? So this guy, they realize that he's heading towards Jerusalem, I believe, um, in the desert, right? He's heading towards Jerusalem, the border of, of um, Israel, and 
the U.S. people start to kind of like, okay, they start, he starts, they start to like panic, right? Because here's 2,000 people in the desert being led to Israel from Iran of all places, right? Um, so they get to the border, right? This person, the Messiah, crosses the fence, jumps over the fence like it's nothing. You know, the, the people at the Israel border, the guards, they start to panic. They're like, oh my gosh, we got all these 2,000 people approaching. We need backup. But no violence happens, right? He just gets arrested. And he starts to... They cover his face. They cover his face like in prison or where in his, the detention center. They have his face covered. And he, this, I guess, interrogator comes in. And the Messiah starts, you know, he starts questioning the Messiah person. And the Messiah person tells him, you know, how he has so much anger and when did it start. And he starts giving this person details about his life. And this person is like, who told you? Who been, who, who you been talking to? You know, and, and the Messiah is just quiet, you know. He, he's, he's not answering. Um, so this person is now... The interrogator is now like disturbed, right? He's so he goes to somebody else that I guess uh, uh, knew about the event, and he's like, "Who you been talking to?" And the person's like, "Nobody." So the the show pretty much ends with the Messiah person vanishing from the prison, from the detention center, right? So, first episode is definitely a introduction. Makes you think that this person is um, a messiah-like person with understanding and knowledge of God. He never says what his name is, and they keep asking him what's his name, and his response is, "I'm the Word." And then he's like, "Wait, but aren't you from Israel?" And he's like, originally. But it's very interesting show. I'm definitely going to keep watching the second episode. Acting is very good. Actors are doing a great job. Michelle Monaghan does great. But yeah, awesome show. Awesome show. Uh, definitely can't wait to watch it. Uh, so why don't we jump into the next topic. Right? Next topic is pressure. Right. Uh, I have a, a testimony I want to talk to you guys about on something that happened to me, like life threatening. You know, because that's really when you um, apply what you've learned in God. Right. You need to be under pressure sometimes. Right. And life threatening pressure. So. Here's my story, right? Here's my testimony. It, I used to have an old Toyota Camry. Uh, I believe it's 1990, the year, 1989, right? Old Toyota Camry with those seat belts that just uh, uh, get on you as you close the door. The seat belt is like on the door frame or something and it just slides into place. And you got your seat belt on, awesome. Right, one of those. So the the I believe it's the called the flexor pipe. Basically, the pipe that connects the engine to the muffler. Right, that pipe had broken, and my car was making this race car noise. And I had put in a fix, one of those patches that they sell at AutoZone or whatever. Right, so I put in this patch so I can go to work. And I don't get a ticket for the noise, right? But as I got to work, the patch came off, right? Or, or the patch got loose or something and the noise was loud. So I was like, okay, this is a, on a summer, this is a Friday summer uh, afternoon, right? And I, I, I get out in the summer, I get out from work early on Fridays, right? Um, we all leave like at one o'clock. So that day, I left like an hour later than everybody, right? And I know I have this issue with my car. 
So I decide to jack up my car in the parking lot at work. But what I forget to do is I forget to put in, to put on the emergency brake as I, after I lift it on up the car, right? So I lift up the car, I get under the car, my head is right under the engine, looking at this pipe, trying to fix it. And what happens? The, the jack slips. And all I see with my eyes, and, and this panic sets into me. I'm gonna get crushed by this car. What do I do? Right, and I, I try to stop the jack, can't. Can't do it. I try to hold the car, can't. The car just slides, the jack. And I'm now I'm stuck under this car. And I thank God. I'm like, I'm not a big guy, but I'm not a little guy either. You know, I don't consider myself a little guy. I'm... Uh, but I'm stuck under this car and I could barely breathe and I'm stuck under there and, and, you, and you at this point I was a, at least a Christian for a, a few a couple of a years right and I had not cursed for the longest but that day a curse came out and I was like I was so after after I like I was disappointed that I had cursed. And I was surprised that I cursed. You know? <laughs> but I'm stuck under this car. And I didn't know what to do. I start yelling for help. I'm like, oh. I start screaming. But the parking lot is empty. Because everybody had gone early. Everybody left early. Everybody left early. From there was only a few cars left. So I'm screaming my guts out or trying because I could barely breathe with this car on top of me. And nobody's coming. Nobody's coming. And I'm like, and I finally remembered the Lord, right? You have one of those moments where that's it. it, it it's I'm, I'm either either you save me, Lord, or I'm done. Right, I'm done. I, I like. I thought I was gonna die because I couldn't get out, or at least I don't know if I would have like. I would have survived by morning, but again, it was Friday. Like, who's gonna come into work on Saturday? You know, like I don't know who's going into work on Saturday, and just the angle that I was in, like everybody would just see a car up there. Like nobody would know that I'm under that car. Until Monday morning when the parking lot fills up. So I start to pray to the Lord. And I hear this voice tell me, you can get out. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I can't lift this car. And the voice was like, yes, you can. And I'm like, what, what, what are you, you know, like at, at that point is like, I, I'm not going to lift the car and, and I didn't lift the car, but I did lift it enough to be able to slide from under it. And I don't know how I did it because I'm more than waist deep under this car, you know, but I was able to grab onto something. Uh, like I don't know what I grabbed onto some pipe some the edge of the car and I was literally able to pull myself out of there by at some point I, I did have to I guess lift the car to a certain degree and I guess you can I mean but I don't know I, I just thank God that I was able to get out and that he was able to talk to me calm me down because I probably would have been dead if I didn't have the Lord at that time you know it, it's amazing I've really never shared this testimony with uh, the public so uh, this is the first time I'm going to be talking about it here um, this was years ago and I'm very thankful 
My wife is thankful. Even though my clothes were all dirty that day after I got out, um, I realized that pressure, when, you, you, when you're under pressure is when you truly know whether you're a Christian. You know, because that day I cursed. And I was like, man, how did that happen? I had worked so hard years and I hadn't cursed. But that day, a curse came out. And I was like, man, the F word. I said the F word. If you need to know what, what, what it was. And I only said it once. And when I said it once, like, my soul, like, said, what are you doing? What, what, what did you say? You know, it's like my spirit. The spirit in, in me was like, what, what are you doing? You know, and I don't know, like. I, I, there, there's no way to really express the feeling I got when I, I when I said that word. I felt like you, you know how you feel like when you fail the Lord. That's how I felt, and I was like, man, pressure really does get to people. You know, pressure really does get to what's in your heart, what what what's really in there. You know, and that's probably why. Uh, uh, Jesus says that in the end times, a lot of people are going to fall away due to the pressure of persecution, you know, and it's unfortunate, but it's something that we have to, you know, be careful of and, and really know um, what we believe, really trust in what we believe in, in the Lord and trust in God. So that's my testimony on how pressure can get to to you guys. You know, pressure as Christians, we need to be able to withstand all kind of pressures, you know, in life. And be able to surpass those and still remember the Lord to save us, to help us, to get us through whatever we're going through. So... Thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for tomorrow. Wow, I spoke a lot today. Look at that, 20-something minutes. Wow. All right. Uh, Have a blessed day. Have a good day. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.